What's happening folks? Welcome back to Celtic Fans TV Full Time Reaction here at Dens Park to Dundee 1 Celtic 2 I've got Kenny with me to go over it Kenny, much in keeping with the rest of the season that um, Another stressful 90 minutes but the main thing is we come out with the points at a key time of the season Yeah, just anxious right through the, the entire game really I mean, thought we started okay McGregor was pinning them in a bit more in his usual style Hattati was playing with a bit more freedom in that sort of pocket and, and, and we looked like we were going to probably have a more comfortable afternoon than it played out. But as the half wore on, we just sort of lost that early rhythm that we had. James Forrest, almost not always against the run of play, but certainly against, you know, out of a bit of a malaise in the game with a world-class volley, incredible. And then towards the end of that first half, we, we did have a bit of space where I thought, look, if, if we focus here and we're composed, we could kill this game off. But the balls, the balls were predominantly coming down the right-hand side to Kuhn and he was just messing it up as he commonly seems to do. So we sort of petered out a little bit at the end of the first half. The biggest problem in the whole match was how we started the second half. You think you're desperate to win this league title. At this point in the season, we've got more to play for than Dundee. And we came out of the traps in that second half, lock, completely lost, inviting them on to us. I think the medical team maybe need to look at Callum. He just doesn't look... He's what, his fourth game back now or something, and he, he's struggling. He's struggling to get 30 minutes out of him. He was lost in that at the start of that first half, McGregor. Start the second half, sorry, and, and it really contributed to them having all the territory, all the dominance. So we rode with luck. But fair play again, Forrest. We've been saying it on the channel for a couple of weeks now. Forrest just needs to start. There's no all, all the alternatives are weak by comparison. And he and he pops up again. Well, that might have looked like an easy finish in the end, but he kept his head there. You can put them over the bar, you can screw them up, but a man of his experience buries it. And then you look for all in the world at that point, think we can enjoy singing out the rest of the game and have a bit of fun. But then a ludicrous own goal from Ida, uh, just naivety. Uh, I think you know with that that the surface in there wasn't great. The park overall was okay, but it was obviously a bit it wanted a bit of care. You don't have a mad swing at something four yards for goal in that situation. I actually thought they had at that point. I thought this is going to be the Alamo we're going to draw because we weren't convincing at deep balls. To be fair, the last 15 minutes we saw that out pretty professionally. Scales, long shies, deep hard defending. So, overall, delighted. I think it what leaves us really two home wins away for the title, which seems close, but it also seems like a lifetime away. It's, uh, it's stressful stuff, Paul. It was stressful. Uh, James Forrest, as you say, more than justifying the selection, though. That first goal, a thing of beauty, as you say. I don't even know if Kyogo means to lay it off like that to him, but we were right behind it. You could see it destined for the bottom corner. I think he's got more technical ability than the rest of the wingers put together. The composure, the goal threat, this is something I was talking about before the game in terms of the stats as well. They tell you that story. Um, and even the second goal, he does so well to stay composed. Two Dundee defenders have converged in on him, but he just shows that calmness to, to put it away. And he's a match winner today. And you see at the end, he hates the adulation, he hates the attention, but um, he deserved it today. Yeah, he's actually, I mean, he's, he's one of the most decorated players in the club's history. You don't achieve that. If you've not got class, and that's what he's got, you know, form's temporary. He's he's not that old a player. He's in his thirty, he's thirty two. He's scored three in his last four games, and he's only started one of those games. And the finishes aren't, you know, they're not tapping goals. These are distance finishes into the corner that are getting us out, of, uh, you know, really getting us out of problem. Four, four goals in his last four games, actually. Even in a defensive sense, on the other side. You've got Chun sort of floundering, giving away cheap fouls, just obviously unreliable. James is refined enough to, to play every role, every part of his game in a, in a way that's far superior to what we're getting on the other side of the pitch. So, if, I mean, it seems to me you just need to start Forrest now in these remaining games, unless he's injured, because there's no really any alternative. I thought Kuhn was a dreadful again today. Palmer looked a bit chaotic when he came on again. Yang's really out of form. We really need Maida back. A big, big gaping difference in both wings today. Forrest quality, other side, all over the place. Maeda can't come back quick enough. But James has got that jersey now. It would be crazy not to not to continue to play him. Not least just because who who better to have than try and marshal you through, you know, a title surge than one of your most decorated, experienced players of all time. I absolutely uh, you mentioned the start of that second half, that was a poor spell in the game. Didn't start well at all. I thought the introductions of Wata and Ida did help us. Ida helped us get up the pitch. I thought Kyogo had a really poor afternoon. Struggled to get involved in the game. And when he was coming deep to get on it, he, he was he was losing it at times. Um, I thought Iwata helped us in midfield as well. As you touched on, McGregor just doesn't seem like his usual self. I think that was just before the second goal. Um, 
And although he did go on to score the own goal and maybe as a wee wobble, um, I think those substitutions did help us gain a bit of control again. We needed that because they, they, were, they, they just looked for all the money they were going to score. It looked like all the money they'd probably go on and win the game the way they were dominating. So we're really bossing us because McGregor was completely lost. Anything that did fall with Kyogo was really deep. He was getting tackled. It was wave after wave. Bringing Ida on, he didn't have a great game there, but he just gives you a focal point. He just gives you an opportunity to lay the ball long. He'll hold it up better than Kyogo can when he's back to go on it, and it just breathes, uh, alleviates pressure. I thought Awata was pretty good when he came on. He just gave us a bit more structure, a bit more bite in his play. He's obviously fitter than Callum. He's, you know, he's getting in at people's feet. He's, his forward play's not, not the best, but it gave us that structure. So that was a key turning point in the game, and Hitati's, what, an inch away from making it 3-0. You know, we could have been, had that, had that nestled in the corner, you know, we could have had a nice goal, goal difference bump. Instead, we've got that horrible, horrible, stressful last 15 minutes. But Rodgers, I think, did, he made the subs, subs at the right time, so fair play to Rodgers in terms of his, how he tactically handled it. Yeah, uh, going into that last 10 minutes, you're expecting the onslaught, as you mentioned earlier, it didn't really come, I thought. We dealt well enough. Um, a couple of silly fouls that we gave away and that long throws coming into the box, but I thought we defended well enough. And at this stage of the season, and it's been the case throughout the campaign, but you just need to find a way to get over the line, and we did that. Yeah, because in, in the game we weren't defending that convincingly. I think they were. I think they realised it's the isolating skills at the back post on the left hand side of our centre half pairing against Aberdeen cost us real problems. They were attempting to do that in the first half and with a bit of success, really. They were winning headers. They just couldn't find the net. So uh, when it came to that last 50 minutes, I assumed they'd be doing a similar thing. But Scales upped his game. He really concentrated. There were some long, deep shies where Joe Hart never came for them and Scales got him out of trouble. So I think he deserves, after a lot of criticism last week, he deserves a little bit of credit for how we handled out the last 15 minutes. They were professional, the guys, and that's something they've not always been because we have conceded. Uh, late moments in games, but that, that you know, that's how you win titles. You just you've got to grit your teeth and grind out difficult afternoons like that. Six points for the next two games, and we'll be within touch and distance, almost over the line. Um, all set for another stressful 90 minutes against Hearts next week. The win it. I don't. I mean, it seems. I, I don't know. I mean, we beat Dundee six 0 or up six 0 about half time. You know, but I, I don't know. Has it been another game where it's actually been comfortable? It doesn't feel that way. Hearts will have, in essence, nothing to play for. Does that make them lacklustre or does that make them play with more freedom? It's hard to judge, but that's going to be a difficult out and they've got a good striker that's likely to cause us problems. We've just got to stay composed, keep her calm. It'd be nice to see McGregor somehow return to some sort of form because he's got to, we need... We need his experience at this point. In, at this point in the season, it's all about experience. It's about keeping a level head, and he's the key man that will allow us to do that. I'm not sure. Out wide is a big problem. I don't actually know who. I, I don't think Kuhn can start the next game. So Maeda's not going to be fit. Who do you play? Yang's been poor. Palmer's been poor. I actually, I don't have any even proposal as to how we handle that. That's the one key area that remains to be a problem for us. But with Forrest back, continuing to score, continuing to keep us calm. We've got every chance. And you've just got to keep your fingers crossed for Maeda somehow makes the starting 11 yeah, next week, haven't yeah. you? Um, there's only one candidate for man in the match today, isn't there? Yeah, it's got to be James. It's got to be James. I mean, even even out with his goals, there was a couple of times he would be a bit clumsy in the, in the first half, but he was putting in some nice crosses as well. Um, and, and just the way he kept his head for that second finish, it's, it's got to be James Forrest and he's got to start the next match. And if, if the rest of the team can just take heed of his, his leadership and his, you know, his experience, we're on a good path. Absolutely, there you go. That's it for a full-time reaction. A massive three points for the Hoops to keep the gap at the top of the table. We'll see you next week for the build-up to that home game against Hearts. Thank you.